Another of the neat things that the Desmos Graphing Calculator app can do is that it can sketch box plots for you, which is really nice. Um, how are we going to do that? Well, of course, before it can sketch a box plot, the first thing you need to do is make sure that it knows a data set. Um, I'm going to just use the data set that I used in the last video of women CEOs in Fortune 500 companies um, over the past 10 years. And uh, I'm going to call my data set set A. Uh, when you're defining your data sets, make sure that you use a label equals and then make sure that your data list is in square brackets and separated by commas. Once I have all of this, the next thing that I'd like to do is to be able to draw a box plot of that. Now I can figure out the five number summary and draw it by hand by choosing the functions button, scrolling down and choosing the stats option. Of set A, which is nice, but I can and and then draw it by hand from this because it's not too hard. But it's nice to have a good computer-generated graph sometimes. So, believe it or not, Desmos will do this for us, and we can find that information once again under the functions button. This time, you want to scroll past the statistics and come all the way down here to where it says visualizations. What we want to do here is to create a box plot. So we'll click on the box plot button. And then notice it's asking us to enter the data set. And we, again, are using data set A. The next thing that it includes here, well, let's just look at what we get right here. And we'll talk a little bit about what it, what it all means here. So let's just hit enter right now. And guess what? Absolutely nothing happened. Um, why not? Well, if you look at our data set, we're looking at numbers between 21 and 52, but our window over here is just set between 0 and 10. You can change the window size up here by clicking on the little wrench and changing your x and y axis, but the easiest way to get it nice, clean box plot is going to be to click on this little uh, zoom fit button, the one that looks like a magnifying glass with a plus, and there's my box plot. What that basically does is it centers the box plot on your screen, uh, so you can see that this way. Now, right now, uh, notice that it says an offset of 1 and a height of 1, and we can change those if we want. If we change the offset to be something like 3, notice that my graph jumps up higher. Because really all I care about is my number line down here in terms of my labeling. That's why 1 is a great default here. If I change the height, uh, let's say I want to make my height 3. Notice that what that does is it just makes those uh, values taller. So it gives you some opportunities to um, play around with your graph to make it look the way that you would want to. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with my height 1 and offset 1 here. Now, let's suppose instead that I have some other data set, and I don't have any real-world data here, so I'll just kind of create something here in the same vein. Uh, let's say that we want to look at set B. Oops, sorry about that. Capitalized. We're going to call it B. Oh, I'm doing all sorts of extra things here. Uh, B equals, and then we're going to set our data set here. And let's just put some numbers here in like 25, 29, 30. 51, 62, oops, that's a really big number, and 55. I just got six elements here, that's fine, but I can ask it to graph box plot B for me. Uh, same idea, you can actually type the term box plot B here if you're working on your um, calculator. Notice it was in italics until you had the function there then I'm going to want to display offset B. Now, over here, I've got the two box plots in two different colors. It's very confusing because they're right on top of each other. This is where, in creating box, stacked box plots, is where this offset becomes really nice. I can move my B to be too high. That's still kind of close together. Maybe I want to make it um, three high here. 
or 2.5, whatever that you want to play around with so you can see that nicely. Now I have the two box plots right here above each other. I'm able to compare like minimum values. Here it was 21, here it was 25. I have a much higher value here in the green data set than I do with the red data set. Here my, the median middle of that, the, that line in the box plot is uh, about the same as Q3 here in the second in the first data set. So uh, that gives us a way that we can create those different uh, graph functions using Desmos.com. Now when you go to turn your homework in, you'd like to be able to share this graph. Uh, a couple of ways that you can do that. One, you can use the snipping tool or you can do a print screen um, if you're on the computer. If you're on your phone app, you can just uh, take a screenshot and then use that as a picture to upload with your work. Here you can take a screenshot and put it in a document um, like that. Another way that you can work with this is to choose this share button. It's located on the black Desmos line here. And uh, what I'd like you to do is export your image. So you can choose that export image. It'll show you a picture here and you can just download the PNG, save it and use that as part of um, uploading your homework or you can put it that uh, PNG file in a document with your other homework answers as well. If you get super frustrated with saving and importing your graphs, you can just sketch by hand what you see here in terms of the demarcations and where those locations are. So um, you can do that and then just take a picture of your homework like you usually do. I uh, hope that helps. We'll do uh, histograms in the next video.